I think it really, it, it starts that people start, they start that way where they, they involve themselves too quickly. They become attached, whether that's unhealthy or healthy, or usually a mixture of both. And then it's too hard to leave. And then things get, they get complacent. And then then they have a love, they have a deep love that's grown for that person, but it's not their person. And so it, then it just like this cycle perpetuates of like, they're neither one of each other's person, but they still love each other. And so like, no one wants, no one wants to call it. So yeah, I'm with you on that. I mean, does he love her or is she convenient? Because as, yeah. her, as long as I have her, I don't have to source out another vagina. <music> Madeline, here we are. Like, we're jumping straight into this, my girl. Now, you have a good one. Now, you do loyalty tests. Correct. Which means you have women reach out to you, say, hey, I'm suspicious about the man I'm with, the husband I'm with in some cases. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling something is going on. Can you run mm -hmm. a loyalty test? Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. give you his information and you go DM him, Miss Sneaky Sneaky. I see how you yep. do that. Being all up in his interests, super yep. smart of you. <laughs> and then yep. from there you see what they do yes what makes you feel yours is loyal that's actually a really wonderful question and I have not gotten that question before and I love it yeah. um I had an interview a couple days ago with some press in London and she was very surprised to find out that I had that I was in a relationship and she was very surprised that I, in fact, didn't hate men. <laughs> okay. And, um, and then she asked me the question of if, uh, we, we talked about like phones and privacy. And she asked if I had full access to my boyfriend's phone. And I said, yes. And vice versa. And she said, well, is that because you feel like you need it? Like if you might need to check in on him, or is it because like you just do it just just to be respectful. And I thought about it and I was like, well, neither. It really just feels like, like our energy, our life, our vibe, our everything is together. And it's all like, we've decided that we want to be partners. And so we are partners and it seems odd to me to have to like grant access to someone or um not grant access in a lot of the loyalty tests um but essentially what i'm saying is like we just live our lives very enmeshed and like very open and there's no you can or you can't have this or you can or you can't discuss this with me everything is open for discussion everything is open for exploration whether that's emotionally or that's in our phones or whatever it may be and so when you have someone that you are enmeshed with and you feel that on a daily basis then you don't I don't think you have to question the loyalty because every step of the way your partners yeah. like true partners yeah one thing that I like to say like to that effect is mm -hmm. when I don't know where he is, I know where mm -hmm. he is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's very, very true. And there would be like, yeah. And I, I think what's interesting and maybe you can articulate this a little bit better. I know you have a lot more experience than I do, but knowing where he is doesn't mean that he has his location on Right. knowing where he is is knowing where he's at mentally and in his heart and like, and being able to trust that, like, yes, I have his location. He has mine. Um, it does go out sometimes because that's what happens with Apple, but mm -hmm. 
but in no sense. And I know a lot of these girls, these girls would be like, oh, his location went out. What is he doing? But his location goes out. It's not, what is he doing? It's just like, Hey babe, just so you know, like it's not working. Maybe restart your phone. Right. So, you know, it's, um, it's choosing to do things together and, and, Ooh, just splash my water and like all of the senses, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and it sounds yeah. like you very much have a similar relationship with your husband. Um, we were, uh, watching some of the TikToks with your husband, you did the husband reveal and everything. It was very cute. <laughs> Love that. You know, people ask so. me, uh, do you believe in soulmates? And I'm like, you know, the, the answer to soulmates before was the same answer that I gave when people said, do you believe in life after death? And the yes. answer that I gave to, do you believe in life after death is I'll tell you when I find out because yeah. I am a social scientist. And so mm-hmm. I'm hesitant to, to, you know, like, like I, I talk about spirituality in terms of meditation, in mm-hmm. terms of how meditation changes your brain structure. I talk yeah. about how we do actually have incredible powers Um, Uh You know, the first story in No More Assholes is me going to a meditation retreat, going into a meditative state, being told somebody's name, the city they lived in their age, and telling my partner that person was an amputee, even though I've never met them in my life. But what I did in that session was bring that person into my space while I was meditating and touch their body. And when I got to one of their legs, it was a vacuum. And so we have these abilities and we can tap into them. And so I can speak on that because I've experienced it. But before my husband, if you ask me if I believed in soulmates, I'll say, I'll tell you when I find out. Now Mm -hmm. that I've had this man, a connection unlike any other, and we've fought for 10 years and we broke up a few times and we got married. It was a leap of faith and we almost divorced. But through all that fighting, the voice in my head, you know, the one from up there that tells you shit, Mm-hmm. it could be so good if only you could clear the static I love that so much yeah I feel that yeah. I do and I, I think it, there's a lot of beauty in not knowing the answer um I don't know if you have children I have two little ones and they ask me questions especially about like you know life after death and things like that and um my answer is similar to yours in this regard that I don't know what I don't know. Yeah. Everyone develops their own beliefs, but like when it's, when it sits well in your heart, that's, that's where you can reside. So So. how long have you been with your guy for? A year. Yeah. So you, you had these children before. Yes. Does he find it challenging being in a relationship? when you're I I assume you're co-parenting yes does he find that challenging because I came in as the person coming in from the outside on people who are Mm co-parenting do you mean in regards to um my relationship with my ex-husband if he has any insecurities about that ever no I I mean he could tell you himself but um we've talked about that uh, quite a bit. He's met him. We go to the soccer practice, gymnastics, and we're all there together. It, um, I actually feel like, um, the opposite, I think of how, or he feels the opposite of how most people might feel kind of threatened by that. Um, but I feel like when we first started talking and, um, one thing that I, and actually we were talking about this the other day, but one thing I noticed about him is when we asked each other about past relationships, um, he didn't say any ill words about his exes and vice versa. Um, and I think that takes someone who's more evolved and secure. And so then when it came around to him meeting my ex-husband, it just felt very, um, like normal and natural and my ex-husband is cool and he's cool and I think if anything he actually appreciates the uh, relationship that I have with my ex-husband because it benefits everyone um, in terms of you know the kids having their father um, co-parenting being on the same page and no you know there's no sense in 
having drama or hating someone or letting insecurities ruin relationships all the way around. So I think that, um, yeah, it's not really even a question, I guess. I haven't thought too hard into it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I want to swing, I want to swing back around to the subject of uh, having, like having each other's passwords, having each other's locations. And one of your TikToks, you talk about the five ways, the five signs that somebody is probably cheating on you. He's got mm -hmm. Snapchat, he's hiding, he's hiding his phone. Mm -hmm. What is it that brought the two of you to the conversation about, you know, giving each other passwords and turning on locations? Do you remember who started this conversation? Um, I'd have to think about it, but I guess it, it didn't even feel like a conversation. It felt just very natural. It felt very much like, um, hey, do you care if I use your phone for a second? It's like, yeah, this is my password. You know, it's like, okay, cool. Like, sorry, I just need to do this. And then it's like, um, you know, I noticed that him and all of his family have all their locations on. And then I think it was probably Danny who recommended like, hey, like we should have our locations on too. So like, I know we're together most of the time, but you know, like for safety and like just, so we have it, so we feel more connected. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, I don't know, it wasn't like any big conversation. It was just like very gradual in the sense that, um, you know, he, uh, we would just use each other's phones for stuff. We're like, oh, let me, let me show you this. Or like, we'll log in with my YouTube because I have the premium. It's like, oh, okay, cool. And so it's like, then we're logged into each other's stuff. And it's like, well, you're using my phone all the time. Just put your face ID on it. And so it, it just felt very normal. I like that because like, it's, it's just like a, it has nothing to do with insecurity. It has nothing to do with checking up on each other suspiciously. Um, yeah. and, and I gotta say personally, like I've just recently kind of come to that realization with uh, location, how it can be not from insecurity, but really, really, you know, not using safety as an excuse, but using safety as like a legit reason. And, yeah. and you sometimes you just have to experience something in order to actually understand it. Actually, yeah. more often than not, you need to, yeah. which is why I, you know, I'm like, I say a single dating coach isn't a dating coach. They're a pickup artist because you have to go through the experience of staying in a relationship. Because yep. that's closing the loop with the dating coach. If you're not closing the loop, you're just picking up, dropping off, picking up, dropping off, picking up, dropping off. So I always thought of locations as if people are asking to track you, it's because they want to track you and they want to track you because they don't trust you. And yes. then a couple months ago, I was like, you know what? I might disappear one day. I think somebody should have my location. And so I was like, asking my friends, um, you know, who has an Apple phone? Who wants to track me? Who wants to be on my, my, my location? So my friend Matt, right? Um, so now like, I, I get that. I get how it, it can be something that's, it's not about being an invasion. It's not about being suspicious. It's just about making sure that you have a connection so that if something happens, if you roll off a cliff in your car, you know, yeah somebody you know if my if I don't come home right and I listen I say to my husband um I'll see you when I go home because mama still raves yeah <laughs> at, at 50 <laughs> okay oh, yeah, get it do your thing yeah I fucking love it so awesome. I say to my husband I'll see you when I get home and yeah. if if you know if I take a day to come home yeah, he's fine with that. Yeah. But if I if I take two days to come home, I want him to be messaging my friends going, can somebody find my wife? Uh -huh. And I want somebody to be able to find me. Right. So do you not have your location turned on with him? My husband is very anti big brother. Okay. Oh, okay. I got I got you. Yes. Yeah. And so this is why when you see him in my TikToks, he's wearing a disguise. Mm, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. you know, I think, um, everyone has a different situation, uh, for Danny and I, it's like a cute little way of feeling connected. Like, I know where you are, or like, you know, I don't know, or like you go to the grocery store that's two minutes away and it's like, 
I look, I'm like, okay, I know I need to unlock the door now because you're almost there or you're almost back. You know what I mean? Like things like that. So I think, you know, or, uh, yeah, I think that everyone kind of has their own vibe, but I definitely think that if you're, if you have your location on for someone, or you would like someone else to have their location on, um, out of suspicion, then you're already kind of, you're, you're in the wrong headspace. Um, I always said in any relationships, like if my, my husband or my boyfriend or whoever wants to cheat on me, they can go ahead and do it. And like, I'm not looking to track anyone down. I'm not looking to figure out where you are, what, what you're doing, question you, anything like that. If you want to make your decisions, you make your decisions. You don't make the decision to be loyal to me out of obligation. You make that decision uh, out of that's what's in your heart. And so, you know, if someone, I, I, I don't want to track anyone. I don't want to check anyone's phone. If I'm in that place, then it's not a good place. So it's not a healthy place. So you know that I teach a no kissing for three months dating rule. I know very little about that, but yes. It, and it really kind of, it, it highlights what you just said, mm-hmm. which is, I don't want to force you to be with me. Like if right. you want to go be with someone else, go be with someone else. And yeah. so the whole point of the no kissing for three months dating rule is if you're just looking for a body, go find a body. Yeah, exactly. I don't want somebody who's just looking for some body. I want mm-hmm. the man who's looking for me. Yep, exactly. I agree with you there. So, you know, when I say to them, no exclusivity, I'm not giving you exclusivity. I'm not expecting exclusivity because an mm-hmm. expectation is a story you create inside your head that disappoints you and it doesn't come true. So mm-hmm. I'm not going to expect someone I don't know to have the level of integrity that I need. I'm going to observe you. And if you do, then you may make the final cuts. But I don't want you to be exclusive to me because I showed up. Just like I'm not going to be exclusive to you just because you showed up. My body, my exclusivity is not a participation trophy. You need to Mm -hmm. earn it. And so getting to know me is part of how you earn it. Because if you're not interested in knowing me, (laughs) no kissing for three months, that's too long. Oh, I guess you didn't want to know who I am. Bye. Yeah. 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 But I want him to get to know me and Mm -hmm. say to himself, wow, I've looked around. No one else compares to you. You are head and shoulders above everybody else. That's what I want. If he decides to put me on the pedestal, that's a choice. He has chosen me above all others. That relationship starts off on solid ground because he's chosen to give me exclusivity based on knowledge and insight, not because of a stupid dating rule that says you should give it to a stranger and hope for the best. Yeah, I I think that's how a lot of relationships start and then and then you get a dm exactly exactly and unfortunately i think that women get more invested than men and i you know for the sake of not turning it into a man brain versus woman brain or patriarchy versus whatever it is i think that what happens a lot of times and the the pattern seems to be very consistent is that people will do exactly what you're saying is they will are like, well, I like you and you like me and both of us are too insecure to allow the other person any room to do anything else. And a lot of times I will tell the girl that is asking for a loyalty test, I'll say, stop trying to control it. And they don't usually expect me to call them out on these things, but I'm, but I tell them like, stop controlling what he's doing. Stop pushing me to push him. He will do what he's going to do. And what you're asking me for is to give you data on what he's doing. So let him do it. And a lot of people don't have that patience or that insight to allow that to even happen. Um, but back to what I was saying a second ago, it, 
I think it really, it, it starts that people start, they start that way where they, they involve themselves too quickly. They become attached, whether that's unhealthy or healthy, or usually a mixture of both. And then it's too hard to leave. And then things get, they get complacent. And then then they have a love, they have a deep love that's grown for that person, but it's not their person. And so it, then it just like this cycle perpetuates of like, they're neither one of each other's person, but they still love each other. And so like, no one wants, no one wants to call it. So yeah, I'm with you on that. Um, I mean, does he love her or is she convenient? Because as yeah. long as I don't have her, as long as I have her, I don't have to source out another vajayjay. Yes, exactly. That's a huge part of it. Yeah. It's like and they want, they want their cake and they want to eat it too. And I know it's like such a typical saying, but it's so true. Like a lot of the time, girls are like how can you do this to me and I'm like hey what's really fucked up is I actually believe that he does love you but not in the way that you deserve to be loved Mm. yeah love is not always functional and I know this yeah it's definitely not functional (laughs) yeah so I don't know if you want me to um unleash a little bit of science on you about why we fall too quickly yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, so no kissing for three months. Why no kissing? Because the kisses, like, you know how you touch, you feel warm and fuzzy. We know that's oxytocin, right? Yes. Yes. Kissing. Why aren't people cluing in to that having an effect too? It's an aphrodisiac amphetamine and antidepressant. That's why it comes before sex. It's a sexual act. It lubricates the sex. Mm-hmm. So I say take sexuality out of the equation. You don't go from stranger to sexuality. The relationship benefits, kissing sex, uh, my exclusivity without laying the foundation of friendship, respect, appreciation, sharing goals and timelines, making each other laugh and being able to solve things. You don't go from here to here without filling in this gap first. So, you know, we're we're taking sexuality off the table because that's the cherry on the Sunday and you don't get the cherry till you build the Sunday. So that being said, because it's an aphrodisiac amphetamine and antidepressant, when you do it, it puts you into it puts you into an altered state, mm-hmm. puts you into an altered state. So you miss the red flags. But we add sex on top of that. So we've created phenylethylamine, which is going to super boost your oxytocin. Mm-hmm. It'll super boost your oxytocin. And then you go ahead and have sex movement in the birth canal girlfriend you had two babies you know about movement in the birth canal (laughs) movement in the birth canal a woman's body releases a ton of oxytocin so her and the baby bond yes so you think about sex you got that movement in the birth canal our bodies are releasing an excess of oxytocin we've added phenylethylamine the kiss chemical aphrodisiac amphetamine antidepressant no wonder we're so emotionally invested and unwilling to let go. Yes, that's, I love, I love that you just taught me that because I, you know, I knew the very basics of that, but definitely not like into that whole like scientific explanation. I love it. And um, very well versed on the oxytocin. I had two natural births at home. And so I relied on that oxytocin to get me through that labor. And uh, it, yeah, the love, the love hormone for sure. And so uh, that, that makes a lot of sense. And it helps, I think, to break it down for people who are too emotional to see past boundaries that they either don't see or they haven't practiced or they haven't learned or they don't, they don't have the tools for whatever reason and um it it makes a lot of sense it makes a lot of sense why it feels good it makes a lot of sense why it makes us feel connected but it also makes a lot of sense why it also gives us a, that feeling of instant gratification and why we move on quickly yes so. okay. yes 
Yes. So that being said, all these women who DM you wanting mm -hmm. these loyalty tests, mm -hmm. how many of them do you think? And obviously we have to pull a number out of our butt. Yeah. But <laughs> how many of them, if you, if you, if you kind of like think about people that you know, if you think about uh, your own history, and if you kind of pull a number that seems like an average that oh, would kind of work, how many of them do you think if they waited for three months before kissing sex and sleepovers and exclusivity and said, show me who you are first. I need to see your patterns. I need to see beyond best behavior syndrome. I need to see how you are when you're comfortable. How many mm -hmm. of them would have kissed that person? I love what you're doing here because you're doing a fantastic job at proving your point. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, yeah, I don't think any of them. I don't think I, I don't think that, and if any of them followed your rule that any of them would be in this situation. What do you think they would have seen before kissing? The things that they always saw, but wouldn't be able to deny if they didn't already get there physically or sexually. A lot of the girls, they already know it's there. Yeah. But yeah. you know, um, people think getting married will make it better. They think getting engaged will make it better. They think having a baby will make it better. And it's the exact opposite. And that's why we have a high divorce rate. Yes. Because ultimately these people realize none of that made it better. Yep. It's very true. And I think that usually people are hoping for something to get better. Or if they will marry me, then they're more committed and they'll open up more, but it's still the same person. Absolutely. I know. Um, remember earlier I said you did a TikTok with the five, the yes. five ways to know that he might be cheating. Do you want to go over those for us? Sure. Um, well, my first one is Snapchat. I have, I swear to God, I'm gonna like <laughs> knock on wood, I'm gonna get sued by them because <laughs> I talk so much shit on Snapchat. Um Snapchat is a very indulgent place. When I first started doing these loyalty tests on Snapchat, I had no idea. I hadn't, I hadn't been on Snapchat for like three years. And so I got on, if not longer, and I, and I got on and I was like, wait, how come I can't see this? Where I just said something, where did it go? And then I'm just like, oh, no wonder people cheat on this app. It was very much like, like an aha moment once I started using it again. Um, and I realized that any, anyone who needs to converse in a place that immediately deletes and has no record, yeah. that's not a good sign. I, and, and if someone is like, hey, I like it for the filters. I hate that. It's like, there's plenty of filters other places or, oh, hey, me and my buddy like to snap. Well, you have each other's phone number. Mm -hmm. And also, even if it is as innocent as, hey, I like the filters or, hey, me and my buddy so-and-so like to snap, is it worth risking your relationship? Like, what you're saying is my ego or my whatever you may feel it is your freedom or anything is more important than making someone else feel secure um so snapchat is a big no for me um big no for me yeah all around the board i don't care why someone has it um no <laughs> yeah so um the second one is one that we already uh, briefly touched on, but it he limits access to his phone. And what's interesting <laughs> about that is your phone. It sounds really it sounds really silly, but your phone reflects so much of who you are. Um, do you remember Room Raiders on MTV? Mm 
Okay. I didn't really, I, I mean, that was kind of like before my time, but I've seen like clips of it. And, uh, so basically like these guys go in on a whim or vice versa to like three girls rooms and they go around their room and based off of what they have or don't have in their room or the state of the room, if it's messy, if it's clean, if they have sexy panties or if they have like whatever it is, they judge if they would date that girl and they choose without ever seeing her. Our phones really do say so much about who we are. And so to limit your partner who is supposed to be the person who knows everything, everything about you and is supposed to feel secure to for them to not even have that is wild to me. Like absolutely wild. I cannot imagine a world where like when uh, I'll ask girls, like, does he have snap? I don't know. Does he have TikTok? I don't know. And I'm thinking, how can you not know? Mm. That's crazy to me. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, I understand like, and it's not a judgment. I understand like the place that they're in and why they're reaching out and things like that. But to not have access to like such a big part of who someone is, especially when it's so easy to hide things, mm. like can't get on board with that. Right. I cannot. Uh, so a really big one that I'm sure that you're familiar with, uh, with your clients is that, um, the woman has been loyal. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of the, the girls that I talk to are like, Hey, like if a guy messages me, I will just immediately like tell my boyfriend, I'll immediately like delete them and block them. And the girl expects that from the guy. Oh, I'm sorry. The guy expects that from the girl. Mm -hmm. However, the guy does not reciprocate and indulges right. in the attention yeah. from females, but would lose his mind if the girl did the same thing. Compl I mean, easy way to say it is double standard. Absolutely. And those, those are the ones that I call guys, selfish, short-term thinkers, yeah. guys, guys, guys are hypocrites, right? Because yeah. I see it all the time. I like, I, I do, I have a no kissing for three months dating rule. I go live with this and they go, that's crazy. That's insane. That's unrealistic. No man is going away. And I go, should women have a high body count or a low body count? Low body count. Exactly. It can make sense. Right. But that's yeah. why we use a no kissing for three months dating rules so that we let them talk. We let them out themselves. Don't occupy their mouths with your exactly. kisses. Mm -hmm. And then we let them hang themselves. Yeah. With their so egos. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the loyalty test is a uh, sense of letting them hang themselves. Yeah. And so what's, um, what's number three? Uh, so, uh, let's see, we did, uh, location, we do location, yeah, Snapchat okay. and, oh, access. To oh, the phone. actually we did. Yeah. We did Snapchat access to the phone is location. The third one. Oh, you know what? The third one. Yes. The third one is location. I kind of meshed the two and I'm sorry. Cause you know, I talk. Um, so the third one is the location. Uh, um, a very common thing that I hear is that, um, the guy will be obsessed with tracking, as you said, the girl, but she's not allowed right. to know where he is or his location just magically isn't working sometimes. And I was like, Hmm, I mean, I like, sometimes that does happen. Like sometimes Apple, which I have my location on my kids' phones and like, sometimes theirs, theirs goes off and they're in my house, yeah. but all the time and at convenient times, you know, and mm -hmm. so it's, again, goes back to the double standard. And then, uh, number four, we were just talking about a little bit, but like, he's constantly jealous and accusing you of different things. Um, it's just telling on himself. Yeah. And especially when the girl's been like totally loyal. And like I was saying, like, Hey, if I have a guy that hits me up, I tell him right away, but like, he doesn't reciprocate that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's interesting because like what you're saying, if you let people be who they are, let them show their true colors, let them hang themselves. Yeah. 
people, if you step back, you're not emotionally involved with the dysfunction. People will tell on themselves Mm -hmm. every time. I had a girl the other day that said, and and she's been waiting for like it. Sometimes it takes a minute for guys to respond. And she said, Hey, he just said to me, Oh, I didn't know you had a message request folder on Facebook. And he told on himself. I'm like, okay, well, I mean, I'll proceed, but we already know. Right. So he went into the message request, was all excited about the fact that he found it. I'm like, oh, my message was there. He was willing to meet up, have a drinks, hang out, denied having a girlfriend, all of that. Yeah. So the jealousy and, but here's the thing. I think a lot of these women and men in situations, and I think we can all relate to this in different times of our lives, but we all feel insecure sometimes, you know, it's, uh, but it's when the women or men confuse a moment of insecurity with accusations, emotional abuse, and telling on themselves. Yeah. So, you know, and they don't know the boundary. They don't know where the line is. And when you're in it, it's hard to find. Yeah. I'm really glad you use the word abuse because I I, want to point out that false accusations are a form of abuse. When somebody goes to hit you and you do this, you flinch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's no difference between that and somebody who makes a false accusation. Yeah, absolutely. No difference. difference. What's number five? Um, Number five. Oh God, you know, I'm sorry. I've jumped around so much. I'm sorry that I haven't been as poignant, but so number five is that he expects you to have boundaries, but he will have none himself. Got it. Yeah. You know, so double standard. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry. I know I like meshed all of them in one because I just like got going talking about them, but yes. So, uh, breaking it down. And again, they all really relate to each other, you know, like, um, oh, I'm just snapping my friend. Um, another one that I heard recently was he said he was just snapping this girl. Uh, he followed her because he felt bad for her. And I'm like, well, what if you followed a guy and, uh, because you felt bad for him, mm-hmm. you know? So, yeah. um, these all, as you know, um, intertwined with each other. Um, but breaking it down as bullet points, I have found is helpful, um, to help women understand like, Hey, this is a thing. This is a thing. This is a thing. This is a thing. And they're all not okay. Yeah. I (laughs) honestly, I like how we're holding guys, cheaters, accountable mm-hmm. now you got a little bit you 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 have somebody like send you some voicemails <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because he's like you ruined my family yeah and i love i love, this, I, love what you, the, blah, blah. I love when you can you just do that for us please your little blah, blah. what i what do i do because when you when you, in your tiktoks it's adorable when when you see something that somebody wrote or somebody said that is just so gross you go oh, the, oh la, 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 la. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, it just i don't know it's uh it's just so ridiculous it is i know i know i know and here we are like i mean like it's it's like we are surrounded by wolves in sheep's clothing oh my god yes and we don't know what's what we don't know who's who and it's our responsibility because listen there's all this dialogue out there will teach men to be better men i'm sorry but the mosquito is going to sting you the sun is going to give you a sunburn if you're not if you're not putting on the repellent if you're Mm -hmm. not putting on the sunscreen you you can't complain about the bug bites and the sunburn the the predators are out there we yes. cannot collectively change every single man out there into the right kind of person but we we can be selective and if we are selective because listen it's all about the mating opportunity and yes. if they get to be a selfish short-term thinker if they get to be a cheater and we stay and we're convenient 
if they keep getting what they want by being a dick, why would they ever change? I am with you 100%. Um, I, Danny and I both watched your TikTok of why people cheat and if they can change. And I do love like all of what you said, because it's like very, uh, it's very pointed and also like scientific and, um, but it was positive in, in terms of um, that, yes, people can change. Um, and it's interesting what I like to tell uh, girls, because um, I'm sure you hear the same lines over and over or the same stories, not lines, but the same stories over and over where they're like, he said he's changed, but I don't believe him. And, and I'm thinking, well, why would you? Because words are words. And I'm sure he told you he loved you while he was cheating on you. So people who change are changing on their own accord. They're not changing because the woman is carrying the weight. The woman is making them go to therapy. The woman is working on the relationship and they're just like, yeah, this seems good. Yeah, that's, that's a better option. Yeah, I mean, I love you. So sure, mm -hmm. yeah. That's not, that's not change. The change is like someone who without the partner in a good way, bucks the fuck up and evolves, takes responsibility for what they do. Yeah. And one thing that, um, people, people who hate loyalty tests, I understand. However, <laughs> however it is a last resort for a lot of these women who don't have the strength to move forward yeah and well that's not exactly my point in this moment my boyfriend and I have had a lot of discussions about babe what if I did the loyalty test to you what would your reaction be yeah. and we ask each other these questions because i think someone who is truly evolved truly committed and truly cares has empathy and compassion for their partner would say hey and they found out you know and let, let's say the guy passes with passes with flying colors and i put passes in quotes because it's like you don't pass or fail a relationship. It's just so, you know, there's so much more to it, but let's say he passes. Um, and the guy's like, why did you loyalty test me? Um, a lot of them get angry. And I tell the girl, like, that's kind of everything you need to know because it's okay that he was hurt about it. Like you can give him his space to be hurt. You can give him his space to be like, well, why? But a true partner, man or woman, would and should come back with, I, and these girls aren't without, like, it's not without merit. Like, they're not hitting me up because they're like, hey, I've had a wonderful fucking marriage. Like, can you loyalty test my man? Like, it doesn't work like that. Like, usually it's because of something that the man did or woman. I do get uh, some same sex couples as well. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And really the discussion, if someone has truly changed in their heart should be, I under it, it hurts, but I understand. I understand why you would feel the need to do this. And what am I doing or not doing to make you feel desperate enough to reach out to someone to loyalty test me. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that if someone loyal, if, if I had someone in some alternate universe loyalty test, Danny, and I would tell him because I couldn't not tell him, <laughs> but like, um, he might be like, well, that's a little fucked up, but like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, where are we going wrong here? Where that, like, that's where you feel you need to resort to right. and so 
it's, it's just, it's interesting because you can be a fan or not be a fan of the loyalty test for so many different reasons. And, uh, but really all in all, if, if a guy knows that he's being loyalty tested, um, or a woman, I don't think that anger should be, if they're truly evolved, they truly love their person and they want to have a mature relationship, that anger is not the go-to. Right. It, you know, it doesn't mean they can't have their own emotions, but it's a little long-winded, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, I think at the end of the day, the answer to why would you loyal test me, loyalty mm -hmm. test me, mm -hmm. um, integrity is what you do when no one's watching. Exactly. And I love that. Until I, in some way, shape or form, examine what you do when no one's watching, I don't have a full picture of what your integrity is. And so exactly. for some people, it's checking their phone while the guy's in the shower. Yep or sleeping. And for some people, it's a loyalty test. But I just, you know, one of the things that I need to check off is what do you do when no one's watching? Absolutely. I, I think that's a beautiful way to put it. And I, can you hear my dog in the background? <laughs> she's, like, <laughs> Sorry. Um, she's on my lap. She, you'll see her in oh. TikTok. Um, but I, I think that's just, that's, such a great way of putting it that I haven't thought of before. And, um, I have a, a question on your thoughts about, um, and a lot of the reason that I started doing what I'm doing is because there's such a big movement, um, if you will, behind digital era cheating. And so, and I'm sure I know uh, what your answer is, but I'd love to hear you expand on this. What are your thoughts on if it's not physical, is it really cheating? Yes. <laughs> Fuck yes. <laughs> A million percent. Is yeah. your attention fractured? I love that. Yeah. That's it. Is Absolutely. your attention fractured? My husband and I have an understanding that our attention is not fractured. He is the one person in the category of romantic interest. Mm -hmm. I have friends. They take some of my attention. But mm -hmm. in the category of romantic interest, we have an understanding. I'm the only one in his box. He's the only one in my box. If I put someone else in my box, my attention is fractured in that category, no matter how I put them in. Figuratively or literally in your box. <laughs> no. Sorry. I couldn't resist. Um, but I, I totally agree with you. I think that if you are looking for attention elsewhere, okay. then you should be honest enough with your partner to either say, one, I'm not getting what I need, or two, I, uh, this is just who I am. And I actually know a lot of people, not to take it too off, off topic, but who have open relationships and I ask them all the questions and I find that even though it's not something like I want or that I agree with for my own self that these uh open marriage couples will actually have better boundaries than these monogamous couples yeah and it's it's very interesting yeah um I, I talk about a no kissing for three months dating and have people coming into my, my chat and saying, what do you think about polyamory? And I say, first of all, what consenting adults choose to do that make them happy is never any of my business. So adult consenting right. happy, none of my business. I don't need to even talk about it. Um, but um, when it comes to polyamory, it's even more important to properly vet the person before bringing them in because so true. You, you, the last thing you want to do is bring in somebody who disrupts what you already have. Exactly. 
And it, and it, I feel like at least with the the open marriages or the polyamorous or the whatever, there's so many different the dirty vanilla that like there's so yeah. to characterize it. At least they they know. Uh, at least typically, in in my experience with um, speaking to these friends, that they know that like no, this is what we have. This is what is allowed outside of it, and those those are very strict boundaries. And um, I know a lot of people judge that, but I actually ended up having like a newfound respect for people in those kinds of relationships because I thought, damn, like you have conversations that people won't have because yes. ignorance is bliss. Yes. I mean, it's not really, but um, I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Um, so after a, and we just talked about a fail. And again, like a guy is like, no, I don't have a wife. No, I don't like, yeah, I have kids. I'm single. Yeah. Let's meet up. Like, I like all, all of these things. I have girls who, and, and it's, and it's funny to me because the short form content of TikTok is very much like, oh, and then he failed. And then I called the girl and whatever. But it's like, you have no idea what goes on behind the scenes. And the girl, you know what I mean? And everything goes on hold because this girl is just distressed. And she's like, Madeline, what do I do? What do I do? And like, she's like, you're the only person I can talk to. Like, I I can't tell my friends this, or I don't have friends. I don't have a support system. And it's like this girl online on TikTok is now their most valued supporter yeah and it's it's intense so because of what you do what you know and the experience that you have when they say what do I do now I know what I say Mm -hmm. but could you what would what would you say dump the motherfucker (laughs) Well, what if they're already planning to? Because a lot of these, oh, I say that all the time. Oh, I deny loyalty tests left and right. I'm like, fucking waste of time. Waste of time. Get, Don't touch them with a 50 foot pole. But these girls who are like, I, I'm not doing this anymore. I can't believe he's been lying to me for this many years or this many years that actually feel blindsided because mm-hmm. they're like, I don't have proof, but I feel it. Right. I feel it. Yeah. And, and, and they're just so raw and vulnerable because they have no idea what to do they're like what do I do now so the first thing they need to acknowledge is the speed of the willingness the the way like like I I see what you do and I see how they're like right like they're starving for this i haven't eaten in a week and you put a plate of spaghetti with meatballs in front of me i'm ravenous they need to acknowledge the intensity with which they picked you up on your offer because that tells them if they are awake they will do this to anybody they will pick up on the offer because what they want is a body they don't care about you they care that you're convenient They're Mm -hmm. with you because you're convenient. And when they can't access other bodies, at least they have you. So they need to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. They need to go through the grieving process. I've got books. I've got Come Back Queen. This is a book that helps you heal from a breakup. They need to go through the grieving process because you need to grieve the loss of the story, the fantasy, the castle in the sky you created inside your head. Got to cry it out got to cry it out. Then you need to level up. You need to make sure you never pick one of these again. Girl, if you did it once, you've got a pattern for me already. If you haven't done it three times yet, you're on your way to doing it three times. If you don't stop this shit of kissing someone you don't know and hoping for the best, because what you show me is you fall for selfish short-term thinkers because you don't know better. So now you need no more assholes because you got to use that no kissing for three months data and save your fucking life. I love that. And 
one of the reasons that I have so much respect for you after, I mean, seeing everything you've done, your credentials, but also just your TikToks is you're just very straightforward and very honest. And I'm, I I take the same approach because who, like, I'm not going to help them at all by giving them some cushy bullshit. Mm -hmm. And so I, I love reading. Um, and so I like, I honestly can't wait to dive in, uh, to your books, but I love like the, the edgy titles. Cause yeah. this feels very much, it resonates with me, but, uh, no more assholes. Fucking love that. Uh, fix that shit and, uh, come back queen. Yeah. And it's just, it's so, it's so relatable because it's like, um, I know that, you know, you have a lot of, um, psychology and, and science and things that go into your books, but but the book title in and of itself speaks to someone who is like, I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that. And so I, I love that because I just, I, I tell girls, um, the same thing, um, not as eloquently. Um, (laughs) but I, I do tell them that, you know, um, if he's doing this to you, um, or if he did, or if he interacted with me, I'm not the only one. I'm not going to be the last one. No. Nope. And, and if you, and if he says he's going to change, if he says that he is sorry, Mm-mm. put space yeah. and let him show that. Yeah. Because no by, for three months. Yeah. For real. For real. Yeah. So this is a cheat, right? And so mm-hmm. when it comes to a cheat, um, it's, it's, it's a relationship contract. So when we get into a relationship, you and your partner, you guys have a contract. There's an understanding that shall not cheat. Don't yell yeah. at me. Don't call me names, right? Yeah. There's a contract. There are clauses in your relationship contract. When you cheat on me, you've broken the monogamy clause. When you break the monogamy clause, the contract is null and void and has been null and void the moment you cheated. So if I find out a year later, I've been single for a year because you nullified the contract a year ago. Interesting. And so if you want us to get back together, yeah, to renegotiate a new contract. Now in the new contract is a trust building clause. There will be full disclosure. I want spyware on your phone linked up to my phone. You don't get to tell me when it comes off, by the way. If you try to say to me after three months, five months, six months, it's been long enough. Let's take it off. My answer is I'm going to dump you today if that's what you want to do. I tell you when it comes off. I tell you when I trust you. Yeah. You're, you're the offender. You're the perpetrator, not me. Yeah. And if, if, if you want to repeat the behavior, you're fighting me on the spyware. Yeah. Yep, exactly. That's, I love how black and white that is. And I've actually never thought of it in terms of like that, that contract, when you did that, that was null and void. So I've been single for a year and I actually, um, I love that mentality because it's such a shift. Mm -hmm. Um, come back queen, you know, (laughs) yeah. Okay. I'm not a victim of your behaviors. I'm not a victim of your behaviors, but your behaviors have consequences. Exactly. Okay. So I have a question for you, like, uh, um, as just trying to pick your brain and, um, gain knowledge, but also like for me personally, so girls often, they don't want to tell their man. I had you loyal. I had you loyalty tested. They shouldn't. No. So what I say is, I think that sometimes, sometimes it is the best option. And sometimes I think it is not. And, but what I, girls want to use me as a scapegoat because mm-hmm. they don't want to tell their partner. So, and I'm, and I'm okay with it. Um, yeah. I, I think when I say they shouldn't, I mean, the ones where the the partner passes you that one oh. where you're like I, I I've never liked being blocked so much right yeah I love it when I got yeah. blocked me, I'm like we I rejoice I really do yes so yeah. if they pass you say nothing you say mm-hmm. nothing because you know you talked earlier about how they might get angry anger is a byproduct of hurt why didn't you yes. trust me I thought I was being trustworthy I thought I was showing you all the good things 
right? So yeah. when they pass, right. don't tell them because that's an unnecessary pain. But mm -hmm. um, it, obviously you got to show this. That's, that's why they did the loyalty test was to get the screenshots. So yes. obviously there's disclosure there. And, and maybe they say did a loyalty test. Who fucking cares, <laughs> right? <laughs> if they call it a loyalty test or not, it doesn't matter. You failed. Yeah. And that is one thing that I tell girls all the time. And I, and I know that a lot of the times that these girls are in a place where they're feeling very fragile, they haven't quite uh, gather the strength to be who they want to be or be where they want to be. Yeah. So, uh, I do offer that like, Hey, or if you need to throw me under the bus and be like, you know, this girl hit me up and said, uh, I was talking to your man and we were making plans to meet up, but then I dug a little bit deeper and found mm -hmm. out that he had a girlfriend. I wanted to let you know, You're right. What's your personal opinion on that? Because I do do that. Yeah. So, she, I mean, she might be doing that out of personal safety. If yes. she knows oh, yeah. that he's somebody who is abusive. Mm -hmm. Wild card. Unstable. Yeah. So she might be doing that just to stay safe. Yeah, I, I agree. And um, one thing that I will often ask if I know, and, and everyone, every client is totally different, but uh, if I know that there's going to be a confrontation and I already feel uh, a certain way about the man, I will, um, I will always offer advice of what keeps you the safest. Like, I do not like, I don't know your situation, but I do not recommend doing this without having someone else there or, you know, things of that nature, like safety first, it doesn't matter what you did or what you didn't do. If he's unstable, yes. that's, that's enough to be worried. Yeah. We, I'm, I'm going to, I'm just, just going to make one final statement on this. Yeah. Let's stop getting into unstable relationships. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> right. Trial and error. Yes. Time, but I feel like no love, more love. And if people can't meet us there, then they're out. Absolutely. Oh, I love the meet us there part. Yes. Oh, Madeline, I adore you. You're so much fun. By the way, I saw the TikTok with your dog when you were calling your dog. She's adorable. She's adorable. Right here, yes. Show me the puppy. <gasps> Look at this little sweetie. She's like, why she wake me up? My son's screaming at me from the other room. So oh, okay. But before we go, I know, and thank you for giving me so much of your time. Um, could you, with all of your wisdom, um, offer, excuse me, can you offer any advice to the girls who are on the fence about doing the loyalty tests? Do it. Do it. Rest your mind. Nothing gives you more peace of mind than knowledge and knowledge is power. And when you empower yourself with knowledge, then you know what to do. So stop swimming in confusion and staying at the fork in the road, not knowing which way to go and answer the question. Is he loyal or is he not? I love it. I, I feel the same way. I feel like there's nothing wrong Clarity. with protecting yourself. There's nothing wrong with protecting yourself. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with gaining clarity. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. But again, much more eloquent way of saying it. <laughs> Thank you, Madeline. But, Where can uh, people find you? you? Um, I am on TikTok at uh, Madeline, M-A-D-E-L-I-N-E, -E, the real, R-E-A-L. And from there, I have a link that goes directly to my, my forms. Um, I have specific questions that I asked to, uh, gather as much data as possible to come up with the best approach and know like an individualized situation and in individualized story. So, and where can we find your books? Amazon. I, Amazon. That's where I look for them. Very highly reviewed, by the way, I looked. <laughs> you know what? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm highly effective. I'm highly yes, uh, I thought like when you read the fix that shirt reviews, like one of the top reviews is actually a one-star review by somebody who did an ego vomit. 
Um, and an ego, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't want to take responsibility for myself. It's not my fault. It's someone else's fault. So people yeah. who refuse to take responsibility for their thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, oh. yeah. um, it's, it's the ego that gets in the way. So the mm -hmm. first review is a one-star review that has, it's an ego vomit. And I've had people say to me, like, does it bother you? That's, just, that's the first thing you see. And I'm like, absolutely not. Because the ego people should not buy my book because they will do another ego vomit. So I yes. want that to be front and center so that yeah. I don't get people who are, I want people to understand if you're not willing to take responsibility for yourself, don't buy my book. Exactly. Yeah. And people who are willing will see right through that. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. uh, thank you so much for doing this with me. I could talk to you all day. This was super. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I love that that you made yourself available and that we got to do this so thank you yeah oh madeline have an awesome evening my love thank you you too i'll talk to you soon bye hey.